I got interested in archaeology at a very early age. Uh, also, history, different cultures in the world. Um, but not specifically the Maya area. So that was more like an, more like an accident to uh, go to the Maya area and, and uh, learn about the ancient Maya and the modern Maya as well. Many people uh, that I know uh, got interested in archaeology uh, watching Indiana Jones movies. Um, but I would say the, the person who influenced more of uh, my career or the person who kicked me out from my country to see the world would be Tintin as, as a reporter in, in strange places in the world. Um, well, first of all, when I went to Guatemala first time, I, I really fell in love with the modern culture rather than the ancient culture. And um, what really got me interested in, in the ancient Maya uh, was that it's still, and, 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 and it still is, not so well uh, uh, known. For example, there, there's a lot of material still to be discovered in the Maya area. Uh, probably hundreds of texts that will uh, that will uh, expose many different features of the, of the culture. So there's a lot, lot still to do. I would say the most fascinating discoveries uh, have happened after the field season. Uh, I've been in, in many, many different projects, but uh, uh, I would say the most fascinating discoveries happen after the field season when you start analyzing your data. So I think that's, that's especially when, when it comes to uh, Maya hieroglyphs and uh, you, you actually, when you're actually able to read what the Maya wrote of themselves, it's, it's a fascinating window to an ancient culture. And it's changing all the time. Yeah. Yeah, basically every day there's new information coming. My favorite Maya site would probably be Piedras Negras in Guatemala on the Usumacinta River. Um, it's still right in the middle of the jungle. There are no people living anywhere close to the site except for the soldiers who, are, who have a, a camp close to the site and some um, people who are in that area for, for many other reasons that are not supposed to be there. And uh, uh, that site also, the history of the site is, is really intriguing. There are a lot of hieroglyphs that come from, from the site uh, that I've been uh, doing research on with uh, some of my colleagues lately. And there's more and more information coming, coming from, that, from that site. Well, of course, you encounter many, many strange and weird things in the jungles of uh, southern Mexico and, and Central America. Um, I would say that they are mostly related with, with animal life. Um, usually some, some snakes, for example, they, they, they almost attack you. But uh, my favorite snake uh, comes, from, comes from the um, excavations at Calakmul. Uh, I noticed that the snake is not a poisonous one, or not very poisonous anyways. So I, I started uh, chasing the snake and, and taking photos. And he or she was going pretty fast, but not as fast as I was going with my camera. So the snake coiled and jumped. So the snake was flying. And, I, and then I realized that the legend of a flying snake in Mesoamerica is actually not the legend at all. It's, it's actually reality. And also that uh, going back to Piedras Negras, uh, on the way to Piedras Negras, it's, uh, it's uh, interesting also when it comes to animal life. There are four meter long uh, crocodiles on the uh, shores of Usumacinta. So it's uh, not, not the place where you want to go swimming. Yeah, I think it's, it's important to uh, read a lot uh, when you are uh, 
uh, doing research or learning about the Maya culture or any culture for that matter. But at the same time, I think it's even more important to question what has been written on Maya or any other culture and do your own research at early age. So all students would question their uh, teachers and question all the material that they find in, in books. <laughs>